Guten Morgen. Good morning, everybody. Um, yes, I'm Ralph Luxer. I'm the Vice President of Engineering of SUSE. And I'm here in one part as one of the sponsors of this event, and I'm very happy to sponsor this event. And I'll tell you in a few minutes why, because actually I do have quite some relationship with La Grande Nation, with, with France. And also, my Linux career started in France. Only a few people know that. Um, in fact, on channel number three, you will hear the German translation. No, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> so please bear with me. Um, I'm going to do this presentation in English uh, in respect of the very international audience we have here. But also allow me to have at least one slide in the presentation. Well, I'll quickly switch to French. Uh, because, yes, actually, half of my heart um, is French, because my wife, Veronique, hello out there, <laughs> um, is from France, and so every day I speak French at home, and I'm very often in France visiting the family, so I have a close relationship to, to France. So I was told to talk about, you know, what is Suze's experience and what is the things we can share with all of you with 20 years of SUSE, uh, 20 years of Linux and open source experience. So that's what I'm trying to do in the next couple of minutes. Um, and before I do that, I will not try to thank all the ministers and everybody because I'm certainly going to forget somebody. I'm just going to thank everybody who came here to make this event happen, um, to invite us to organize it to support Linux and open source in France and worldwide. I think this is a great event, and it's really a pleasure for me to be here, and it's a pleasure for Suze to be a sponsor here. So thank you very much for that. So here, really, the connection I want to make is not what you might think if you look at the calendar. The calendar, all the speakers before and after me are in yellow, and my talk is in red. And I looked up what red means. I am supposed to do a business talk. Yes, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about that, but most of these things, please come to our booth, talk to us if, to, if you want to learn more about our products. That's not what I'm going to want to share with you today, rather the experience that, that we have. So for a short moment, let me switch to French. Alors, moi, j'ai fait mes études en Allemagne, mais grâce à un programme d'échange d'étudiants qui s'appelle Erasmus, j'ai passé ma maîtrise à Bordeaux. Et c'était le prof du laboratoire bordelais recherche en informatique, vous avec vos appréviations. Hein. Euh, c'était ce prof qui m'a proposé un projet de prendre GDB, un logiciel open source, euh, que je connaissais très bien parce que j'avais déjà travaillé avec Unix et avec des GNU Utils, et de le faire marcher avec ces machines assez anciennes <rire> qu'il avait là, par remote, où il a donné des cours, euh, euh, des, des cours sur le noyau d'un système d'exploitation. Alors mon projet, c'était de prendre GDB et de le faire marcher par les remotes à des petits PC qu'ils avaient au laboratoire là-bas pour débaguer un kernel, un noyau. Alors, il me fallait quelque chose qui pouvait parler GDB, protocole, et euh, oui, un pilote pour, la, pour le port série. Et à ce temps-là, le, le prof il m'a dit, regardez un peu là sur Linux, il y a quelque chose. Et à ce temps-là, vous voyez là ma, mon certificat de scolarité 91 Linux était capable à échanger des A et des B entre deux processus et il y avait un pilote pour une ligne série. Alors c'était ma première expérience avec Linux, c'était ça, prendre que ça et le faire marcher dans ce projet. Et en fait, j'ai entendu beaucoup aujourd'hui euh, la grande nation numérique, la grande nation des entrepreneurs et de l'innovation. Et je dois dire, c'est vrai c'est en France où ça a commencé. Pour moi et aussi Linux. Il n'y avait pas Linux en Allemagne. Il y avait Linux en France, à Bordeaux. Il y avait même un, il y avait même un groupe d'utilisateurs de Linux à Bordeaux en 1991. 
Et le monsieur qui a géré les FAQ, c'était Marc-Michel Corsini, du groupe à Bordeaux. Alors quand même, c'est vrai ce que tous les gens avant moi ont dit, vous êtes très très fort en France d'essayer de des nouvelles choses, d'avoir cet espoir de commencer quelque chose vraiment et d'avoir un grand rêve de faire plus avec. Merci pour ça, c'était vous qui, qui m'ont appris de regarder à Linux. Après, je suis rentré en Allemagne. Après, je suis rentré en Allemagne, j'ai dit à mon prof à Erlangen, écoutez, euh, là-bas en France, j'ai vu Linux, est-ce qu'on ne l'a pas ici Est-ce qu'on ne peut pas avoir un FTP, Mirror, des TSX11 et tout ça Il a dit, ben, si tu t'en occupes, c'est OK. Alors, je suis sorti et j'étais le FTP admin de l'université d'Erlangen, qui était la première université en Allemagne, qui avait un miroir de Linux. Alors moi, j'étais un des premiers en Allemagne qui a fait Linux. Et euh, voilà, vous voyez la relation. C'est le mariage dans ma vie personnelle, mais aussi ça a commencé ici en France. Et depuis, j'ai pendant les 21 ans, 21 ans que j'ai travaillé là-dessus, j'ai fait des distributions. Je suis maintenant, je, je fais partie du euh, leadership team de Souza, mais dans mon cœur, je suis toujours un développeur Linux et développeur open source, et ça ne va jamais changer. I said one slide in French. Uh, C'est one slide and a half. Uh, putain, 20 ans. Alors, uh, pour les gens qui... Uh, fou, anglais, français, maintenant c'est anglais, pardon. Uh, um, for those who don't know it, uh, this is kind of for some comic in, in France. Uh, putain, bon, je vais pas... Tra I will not tr translate that. Well, it's going to be tough to switch between languages in the presentation. Um, yes, Sousa has 20 years of Linux experience. Happy birthday to that. So here are some of the milestones that Sousa has gone through. And I can tell you that we have also started really from the roots. The developers were GNU users, they were Unix uh, people who learned Unix at university, who wanted to do something with it, and that's how it all started. So my developers come from the open source development community spirit, development model, and all of that. Now today we are a business, but we have kept all of that. And here you see a couple of, of the important steps. You see how we still today link very much to the community. We have the OpenSUSE project that we have a lot of contributions to and are a sponsor of. We have things like uh, the OpenSUSE build service, which is not only building packages for SUSE, but even building packages for other distributions because we want to provide to all the Linux users out there and Linux developers great tools to do a better job for Linux overall. So my guys always think about, is this good for SUSE? Is this good for the customer? Is this good for the Linux community overall? So how did it all start? Well, like this. A little startup in Nuremberg, Germany. Here you see a couple of, uh, of, of pictures there. That's how it started. So it was a startup. It was exactly what was told today several times. Please take take it, use open source and build your business around it. It's a great experience and I'm, I can only recommend it. I've built my own Linux business and it was only later that I then joined SUSE as the, as the engineering leader. So SUSE has gone through a couple of, I would say, uh, rewrites, if you want to say. So here is an example of the logo. The logo has changed a little bit. Um, it has been a little bit more read sometime in between when, when it was all kind of overarched by Novell and the Novell acquisition. But now you can see today, Green is back. SUSE is an independent business unit and is actually stronger than, than ever before. What were some of the milestones that SUSE went through in these 20 years? Well, here I'm, I'm listing a couple of these. I think the first really appearance in France And by the way, when I came to France to visit my parents, it was Mandrak everywhere, okay? Um, so only really in 2004 or so, I think uh, SUSE appeared here in France as part of the SUSE Linux Enterprise server from Novell. And so I'm only, only going to talk about the milestones after that. In 2006, 
we entered a partnership with Microsoft. And I know the reaction in France, in Germany, all around the world. I had a similar reaction. Because why in hell would somebody doing Linux work together with Microsoft, right? So the reason initially why I used Linux on my, on my machine at home was because I didn't want to use Windows. But today I can tell you the partnership with Microsoft actually has been a very f fair partnership. So they have always played uh, fair with us. We have commonly made Linux better, made LibreOffice better, made virtualization better. So retrospectively saying, yes, there were fears, and also I had my doubts initially, but actually today I'm saying Microsoft is in. They are part of the Linux community, and I really like that. So I cannot say anything negative about it, and I think even if there are some people still skeptical, you can believe me that I'm working with them every day. It's actually a great partnership, and those people we talk to, be, talk to and work with are, are really great. Then SAP is actually one of the big success stories of SUSE. Um, SAP is in, uh, headquartered in Waldorf in Germany. So very early there was a, was a close cooperation between SUSE and SAP. Um, they very early on started the development on SUSE and particular on, um, actually SUSE became their number one platform and from that they developed their software and then ported it to other platforms. And nowadays we have wonderful business together with SAP, happy customers about the HANA appliance. So this is, this is another great milestone that happened for us. In 2009, uh, we started something that's called the SUSE Appliance Program because we saw that the industry is changing. From this, you know, you install a distribution with floppies, CDs, DVDs later, and that has changed because everybody kind of assumes that it's there but then you have to configure it and go through all these steps and this hassle. So we felt like we have to make it easier for the users to deploy Linux, to make it easier for them to just do what they want to do, which is running an application. So we have started to package operating system, middleware, and application together in, in the appliance program. And I'm inviting you to come to our booth to hear more about that. And in the last couple of years, we have been going more and more in the direction of virtualization and cloud. No surprise, everybody does this. Um, so, SUSE today, what are we doing now? We actually uh, are close to 800 employees now, so the slide is already outdated. We are, we are hiring like crazy at the moment, actually. We have uh, 43 um, employees in 43 different com uh, countries, more than 15,000 customers, more than 20 years of Linux experience uh, in the company, and we have a very strong partner ecosystem. So SUSE doesn't do everything. We work a lot together with partners. That's part of our model, okay? We don't want to own the whole stack or lock you in. We want to be very partner-friendly, very customer-friendly and, and open. I already talked about SAP as one of the success stories for SUSE. Mainframe is another one with IBM, very strong relationship there. SUSE is strong in China, uh, maybe not that well known here, but we are by far the market leader in China with our enterprise server product there. And then there are a couple of verticals where SUSE has become really strong. Aerospace and defense, you can see here. Um, automotive, yeah, cars made in Germany. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a lot of car manufacturers started in Germany, but now all around the world who actually work with us and are very happy with that. Many certifications, really essential if you want to build an enterprise uh, Linux distribution. You need hardware and software certification. So this is a big strength of us. And high-performance computing. So Europeans' fastest supercomputer currently is the SuperMOOC in Munich running through the Linux enterprise server. So this gives you a broad overview where SUSE is kind of focusing on. Um, and then here is what is the strategy going forward. So yes, we all use Linux, uh, we use open source, but where are we heading? So enterprise Linux, that's where we are today. Integrated system, maybe not so well known what we mean by that. It is you take the enterprise code base, the enterprise platform, and you embed it into specialized devices. Medical, you know, uh, MRT scanners um, or big uh, storage boxes running Linux internally. And now 
in the last two, three, two years, I would say, we have started to look into the cloud strategy and cloud infrastructure at SUSE. And uh, what does this mean, cloud the SUSE way? So we are collaborating very closely with a lot of uh, cloud, um, cloud providers. Okay? So they use SUSE in their infrastructure, but they also run, they, they also run SUSE as a guest in their, uh, in their data centers and offer this to customers. So here are you know, a quite impressive list of, of, of hosters that we work with together in the public cloud. Now in the private cloud, we have a lot of enterprise customers and they have data centers and they want to use the agility and flexibility of the cloud uh, in their data centers. They are not yet ready to go pub public with all of their, their data. So on the private cloud side, we have, in the good open source manner, looked at what is the best project out there, what is the most active community, the most promising community, and we decided on to, to go with OpenStack, um, become a big sponsor of that and contributor. And actually, since uh, September, we have the first SUSE Cloud 1.0 product out now based on OpenStack, where, the, where we did the typical SUSE thing. We take an open source project, we look at it, we contribute to it. We, in this case, we did hardening, we integrated Crowbar into it, we packaged it nicely, we fixed bugs, and then made it very easy for customers to consume. So if you're interested in the cloud arena, and I know, I know we, are, we are hosting a track here, uh, look at the SUSE Cloud product, which is uh, now ready and available. It's an enterprise solution. With, with all the support that you know from an enterprise uh, kind Linux distribution. Last but not least, um, what is SUSE going to be tomorrow, in a year, in five years from now? So I, as the engineering vice president, I can assure you that we will stay very closely connected to the Linux and open source community because that's where our roots are, but that's also where our hearts are. So you will not see SUSE doing something that is not connected to some sort of open source project. We will always use open source projects, projects and then enhance them and then build enterprise class products out of that. We are, as a company, small enough to be flexible and agile, to listen to our customers and to listen to our partners. But we are also big enough, and you've seen the numbers in terms of span worldwide and workforce, to support big companies around the world, Fortune 500 customers. So that's for sure going to stay. On the technical side, what I think will change in a couple of years, you know, people won't talk about Linux anymore because it's going to be everywhere, from your cell phone to your data center to your cloud. So I think the awareness of Linux inside is going to diminish, but the usage of Linux is going to extend rapidly, particularly into the cloud. And that's why SUSE is positioning themselves to go into this direction with all the 20 years of experience that we have. And again, I want to invite you to come and visit our booth. But most of all, I want you to continue this great open source and Linux family that you're here with all the different public and private sponsors and supporters and developers. I think this is great, and I hope every year it's going to grow bigger. And we're happy to be a sponsor again and to be here together with you. And have a lot of fun the next couple of days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.